The man who never fell has no glory. The man who fell and got back up, that's where his glory is. The man who fell 20 times and got up 21 times, that man has even greater glory. Wow. Everything in life that has any value is balance. There's a balance. There has to be a balance. What is the point of being a masculine, manly man if you're a stupid man? And, and But what is the point of being a brilliant, studied, educated, whatever, uh, if you're a weakling? Horsemanship and raising children, both, is like holding a wet bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I suck at that. I Hold on a second. I hope there's more to this. So yeah, that, yeah. that it? <laughs> some bacon on a biscuit. We're burning daylight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Chasing Mountains podcast. We are in a different location today than usual. We look a little different. We're here at uh, Dry Creek Wrangler School in beautiful Wyarno, Wyoming, just outside of Sheridan. We've come a long way to visit with our friend Dwayne. Yep. Couple um, days to drive here. Couple of days to get here. If you spend any time at all on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, you have seen this man, you have seen his content. A lot of wisdom resonating with uh, you know, I think young men in particular, um, but just kind of everybody. He's got some some uh, wisdom and a whole lot of experience uh, that he's shared with the world and has really kind of blown up in uh, the, the the last year or two, right? Uh, yeah. Um, it's blown up mostly in the last year. It's the biggest year and a half. It's yeah. been the biggest jump. 600,000 plus on YouTube, right? 620,000, 620,000 today. Nice. Wow, congratulations. congratulations. We are of those who believe that by the end of the year, you'll have a million subscribers and but i want to go back to the beginning when you posted your first video number one what was it about and what did you expect views wise or what did you expect at all i don't remember which video was the first one exactly but it was i had two things that um i wanted to i wanted to do i love wrangling which is where mostly young people these days take folks out on dude ranches and take them horseback riding, you know, in strings. And I've been doing that for years and it's, it's weird, but I love it. It's one of those things you'd think I wouldn't, but I do. And, uh, but there just wasn't a whole lot out there to help young people who are wanting to go into that life. I mean, I did, there wasn't anybody to teach me. I did everything by trial and error. So I wanted to start putting videos out to help them. And the other thing was I just, I wanted to, provide a legacy for my grandkids just something you know when i'm gone my grandkids could say hey that's that's grandpa you know leave something and we thought you know if we get 200 subscribers we're gonna hit the big time <laughs> there was no such thought of monetizing or i mean i didn't even know that was a thing when we first started you didn't at all no no wow um, so that wasn't a concept building the channel that none of that was what we were trying to do. It was for heritage so your kids could know who you were, or your grandkids. 200 subscribers was success to you. Yeah. And here we are two years later, 620,000 mm -hmm. people. What's going through your mind the first time a video's skyrocketing? What did I do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going I didn't. I didn't understand it. I, I didn't know how it worked. I didn't understand, and I still don't. I didn't understand algorithm. I didn't understand this. I, di I didn't understand any of it. What video was it? You know, I think the first one that went big for us was like just the simple one we did, maybe campfire cooking outside or making a pot of coffee on a campfire. I think those were the one of the first ones that really took off. Dude, why are people watching in the millions and on those TikToks, tens of millions? So, like, why is it resonating with the young? I think that this shallow, modern, uh, media-driven society, I think there's a lot of young people that have woke up and realized that this is empty. And uh, there's nothing real in it. Uh, the people aren't real. I mean, you know, there's somebody... And you guys probably from your background, you know, somebody's doing their hair, somebody's doing their makeup, somebody's writing their script. You know, it's all green screen and wires and there's nothing real. And uh, and they look around and there's nothing real in their life, you know. And so the only thing that I think that we've offered is just realness. It's just simplicity. 
in a very complex society, in a very loud society, in a very shallow, flashy society, just simplicity and realness. I mean, that's the only thing. That's what I figure. I, I feel it's the same way. And one of the things that I know Dave and I were wondering is when you started the channel, what were people telling you? Because we know, we, we've worked in YouTube for many years. We know what everybody says you have to be to be successful. Right. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Like, what did, did people tell you you're doing wrong? You're oh, oh yeah. Um, I was supposed to do all this complex stuff and these cuts and music and, you know, and be lively and be this and be that. And I'm like, if that's, you know, if that's what I have to do to be successful, then I won't be successful because I mean, from the very beginning, I didn't, if this makes sense, I didn't start this with the goal of being successful, hmm. you know, that's probably why it was successful. <laughs> you know, you see a lot of, you see a, a lot of YouTube content that to me, it's like they didn't really have a heart for anything. They're just, I'm going to be a YouTube star. So what do I need to do to be a YouTube star? And so they, they create a persona and so they, you know, and they chase that down. And my wife and I, that's not what we were about. We're like, we, we don't, we don't care about it. I feel like authenticity is so valuable right now because of a world of fake. The world is propped up. Like you said, it's all wires and makeup and it's just, it doesn't feel real. When I first saw your video and I mentioned you this before, I was like, wait, is this, is this guy real? Like, is this a real cowboy? Is this, wait, is this scripted? Like this stuff is hitting hard and really successful. Then I started digging in. I was like, this guy is, has a real Wrangler school. Like this is an actual cowboy. And I got a hold of Dave and I was like, Hey man, we got to go talk to this guy. Like, I think he's like a, a legit cowboy. Cause I, I, I grew up around guys like you where it's just like, um, like they mean what they say and they say what they mean. And if they say they're going to be there and they're, they're going to be there rain or shine or snow. And right. uh, I, I, and then I started looking at the actual views and the success of the channel. And I was like, this is, this is, this is incredible. Um, but it goes back to, this is an actual Wrangler school. Can right. you, can you just like elaborate? Like, tell me about this place. Well, so it's a school and I started the, the base foundation dream for my wife and I with the school is we want a means for young people who are like, we're not buying into You've got to go get a hundred thousand dollar college loan. If you want to do that, that's fine. You know, we're not going to go get a college loan and then get a degree and then wind up in a cubicle and have a job that we hate. Um, it wanted to provide a means for people, and it's not just been young people who, if they want to actually chase and follow their dream, uh, they can first go to somebody who's had a lot of experience. And just teach them the basics of horsemanship, the basics of wrangling, the basics of all that. I mean, you can only teach so much in a week, but um, I fit 30 years of experience into a week here as much as I can. Wow. And so we've had, last year was the first year. This year is our second year. And we've had a number of students that they're out working on. Uh, oh, so at, they, they graduated and they're on. They spent a week here and went and, and got a job wrangling, doing well. I got one working for a outfitter up in Idaho, for elk hunting outfitter. And I got some that are working on dude ranches, wrangling dudes. And so wow. we're, uh, we're accomplishing what we set out to do. We had a young couple come through last year and, uh, they came through, went through the school together. Went home, quit the job, sold everything, came out west, got a job together wrangling on a ranch, and they're absolutely just in heaven. That's what my wife's going to try to talk yeah, into. Right. <laughs> what's that? What's that life like for people that are kind of uninitiated to this whole this whole world of cowboys and wranglers and horsemanship? I mean, how would you describe in, in kind of a nutshell, which maybe is really difficult to do, but like what for for someone that's just never been exposed to it. I well, mean, is it like the movies? Like what what is that like? No, it's not like the movies. <laughs> so um, John Wayne was a lie? Are you John, John Wayne wasn't a wrangler. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's true. Yeah. So wrangling, now there's there's cowboying and I have cowboyed, but I'm not I, I've worked on a number of cattle ranches, but I don't consider myself a cowboy. I'm a terrible roper, <laughs> you know, and and so there's but there's cowboying. There's uh 
wrangling and there's packing, which is three different things. Cowboying is just working cattle. Mm-hmm. It's cattle. Wrangling is is horses. Now, as it's used most today and understood most today, these are the folks who take care of horses and then take guests who want to go on horseback ride and take them out and guide them and uh, take care of the guests and take care of the um, the horses. And then a packer is someone who works normally in the mountains. And so when hunters or whoever, whatever the situation is, come in, they have mules with pack saddles. They put all the gear, all the camping gear, all the supplies on these mules. And so they're transport up in the mountains and and uh, and then transport like if they get game elk or whatever transport it back out so there's three different things there so a wrangler normally they uh, work on a ranch it's usually young people um and uh, on a on a guest ranch and so you get up over morning and uh, you've got to feed the horses so the horses have a chance to eat before they go to work and uh, so, so it varies but so you'll feed the horses then you'll go get your breakfast while the horses are eating and then you'll come out and they'll tell you your first ride how many people you got going out and so you'll go catch that many horses and start saddling them uh and then when the guests start showing up you know you're told okay these guys have, they're going on two hours or three hours or four hours and uh, so you get them on the horses and a good wrangler knows how to pair the guest with with the right horse and put the right horses in line uh, with each other, and then just they go out and try to keep everybody alive out there and having fun. Uh, wrangling is, most people think of, of it as a horse job. It's not. Um, and that's where a lot of the wranglers that don't succeed, that's where they don't succeed. It's, it's a people job. Hmm. If you can't communicate with people, if you can't deal with people, if you can't handle people, um, then... Uh, you won't do well at wrangling. Hmm. Uh, so it's my, I've said here in the class several times, the worst wranglers I've ever worked with were cowboys. Wow. Now you would think that these are the folks with the most uh, horse experience, so they'd make the best wranglers. But they're the worst with people. So cowboys are some, make some of the worst wranglers. Because just they're not good with people? Yeah, at, yeah I mean, you know, I'm painting with a broad brush. Sure. But yeah, they, they don't do the people part well. And, you know, it's, it's the people who pay to go on the ride. People come here. They come stay a week. They come stay in this beautiful house. It's from, what year was it? 1898. Right, 1898. 22-inch thick rock walls. Yeah. Um, basically, it's a bomb shelter. So <laughs> <laughs> the, the location is breathtaking. I rolled up. I think the first thing was like, I'm jealous. I want to live here too. <laughs> um, but people can experience not just... Here's how you throw on a saddle, but it's like taking you almost back in time. Well, it's so we're not one thing that we make sure that folks understand if they want to come out to the school. Um, we're not a riding school. Uh, it's a horsemanship school. So there are a lot of classes that are not on horseback because there's a lot of people who have spent a lot of years on horseback and they don't know anything about horses because mm-hmm. you don't learn about horses from horseback. If you learn the proper things about horsemanship from the ground, you can apply it in the saddle. But everything that happens in the saddle has to happen properly on the ground first. And so we teach communication with the horse, understand the instinct of the horse, communication with the horse. Uh, We teach a very in-depth class on saddles because a wrangler rides professionally all the time, but there's a lot of hurting wranglers out there because they don't understand saddles Mm. to start with. So we have very in-depth class on saddles. We have a we have a class on bits and head stalls and stuff. Uh, we have a class on uh, the uh, digestive system and, and diet on horses. We have a class on basic first aid on horses. Uh, we have a class on basic hoof care for the horse owner. We don't teach uh, farrier work, but what you need to look for to know, okay, I need a farrier out here. This isn't right. And just to be, is a farrier someone who horses That's someone who horse? puts shoes on horses, okay. yeah. And so, you know, and so we ride, you know, we do ride, but it's not, that's not, it's not a vacation spot. It's, it's a school. It's a school. It's a school. I, you know, I've seen, I've been to some seminar horsemanship 
seminars, clinicians of guys that were way better horsemen than I am. Okay, there's it's not a question. No, no problem admitting that at all. But I've watched and I've seen the uh, their the folks out there at the clinics, and their faces are just blank and they're lost. And I'm like, they're not ready for this. Like there are some there are some kindergarten basics that your average person never got about horses, and uh, so it's like trying to teach somebody algebra without teaching them addition first. And so we teach the basics to start out. Just uh, what is a horse? What makes a horse tick? You know what what makes a horse react? They do. You know. I appreciate what, that you do that because I feel like. I know so little about horses. Right. I'm coming up here just to do a podcast with you, and I was already like, hey, man, I haven't ridden a horse in 20 years. <laughs> don't don't laugh. And you yeah. were like, we do not laugh. We, no. We're here to teach you. And I was like, I appreciated that right off the bat. We, we have folks come through the school here who have never been on a horse before. Not a problem. Sometimes it's easier to build a new house than it is to remodel an old one. <clears throat> no bad habits. No bad habits. Yeah. Some of my most, not all, Okay, but some of my more difficult students, I don't mean difficult uh, attitude-wise. I just mean to teach are ones who come from a horse background that just it wasn't right. And so they have to unlearn what they know, things that just will not go out here. It just won't work. I hate to interrupt you. I've heard that sound on your podcast, and I didn't know what that was. I was like, <laughs> is, that, um, is that coffee kicking in, like something hidden? Just for anybody who's listening, he's lighting up his cigar, <laughs> and I had I I listened to his podcast, and I was wondering what that was. Yeah. That's what that is. Never it's, stop doing that. It's please. my torch. I yeah. love it. <laughs> Were you starting the YouTube to launch Dry Creek Wrangler School, or did you start the school and think I'm going to start a YouTube channel? Well, the YouTube channel definitely came first. Okay, my wife and I tried to start a school, something like this, twenty years ago. And it just, we couldn't make it fly. Couldn't get it off the ground. And uh, so we kind of put it on the back burner and gave it up. The YouTube channel took off. Um, and and I started getting comments from folks on there saying, man, if, if you'll start a school, I'll come. And I was working. I was wrangling for an outfit in Texas. That, <clears throat> so I'm one of those overnight successes that took 30 years to yeah. happen. Yep. Yeah, two years ago, I was making $11 an hour wow. wrangling on as a dude on a ranch. Wow. Um, and But it took off, and uh, the channel did. And so we said, you know what? We're going to close our eyes and jump off the cliff. We're going to do it. I love that. And uh, and so we, we were living in a little motor home. She and I had a little Class C 1993 Ford motor home we were living in. <laughs> And, uh, we, uh, you know, things started falling into place and we wound up, we, someone made available a small piece of property in Tennessee. And so we went there last year and started the school and, but we knew pretty quickly that was not a long-term stop. We didn't expect, uh, to be able to do something so quick. Um, but then this place, a series of events. Um, became available. So we moved out here in April and uh, we just finished our fourth week of class this year. Wow. And by the way, within the first week of class starting, we're booked all the way through the year this year. All the way. And we have a waiting list. We've got people on a waiting list that if that if anybody calls and says, I'm sorry, you know, I can't make it. They're like, you call me and I'll take that spot, any spot. Wow. So, yeah. That's a good a spot waiting list in. is like the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. What's, uh, a, what's it like running a business now? Like doing this, like you've been a wrangler. You've been a law enforcement as well. I mean, you've had kind of a pretty diverse career, but I mean, you're now in the entertaining business, in the, uh, you know, hospitality business. He's going to smack you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's what's that that been like, that adventure? I, it's It's bizarre. I don't like the business side of it. I don't like business. I'm not a businessman, never wanted to be a businessman, but I did want to do what I wanted to do without people who did not know what I know as much as I know telling me what I can and cannot do and paying me pennies for it. That's a Ooh. lot of people that start businesses. Yeah, that's yeah. a. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. 
So some big motivating factor. The big motivating factor is just working for myself, doing things the way I want to do them. Yeah. And then what I don't want to do, I don't do. I love it. Yeah. There's a lot of people that lack the courage to do that, you know, to take that leap. It, it is a leap because it's like, hold your breath. In your case, you said, hold your breath, mama, we're jumping. Yeah. And I'm I'm so happy that you took that leap of faith because it's it's something that most people are too afraid to do, but I'm too afraid to live the other way. Well, you know, if, if you hear, you know, you hear stories and the two main ones when they talk about this subject that come to mind uh, is Colonel Sanders and Abraham Lincoln. You know, how many times did he fail? Yeah. And, fa and Colonel Sanders failed, and, and he was an old man by the time he succeeded. And so this success comes on the heels of years and years of failures. Uh, so it's not it's not just a case of you can't be afraid to fail. You can't be afraid to fail again. You can. And again. And again. It's getting back up. Some people are afraid of falling that first time. Well, then, but as if, you know, if we had quit getting up, you know, 10 years ago. So it's just getting up again and again and again. And every time you fail, you learn from it, you know. So that failure was necessary. That failure was positive. That failure taught you another piece of the puzzle that you're going to need when you finally succeed you're only going to have what you need to succeed because you gained it from your failures and if you don't have any failures you don't have anything to build your success on because you didn't learn anything wisdom comes at a price and sometimes we don't want to pay it anymore it's sort of analogous to i think how you've described horsemanship where there's a lot of people in life and in their career, they just want to jump on the horse and ride. They just want to go. And they don't have the patience to learn the foundational stuff. You know, they and they get out ahead of their skis a little bit and, and don't have the, the background and experience and wisdom to, to back it up. They don't have the patience, but they also don't have the humility. Mm. Um, and that's what it takes. It's, it's humility. Horsemanship is a lifetime of study. I mean, you, you never, you'll never learn it all. Mm. You'll never get it all. Um, but it, it takes, it's like anything else that you want to master. You've constantly studying it. You live it, you sleep it, you eat it, you breathe it, you study it, you dream it. Uh, you humble yourself and learn from anybody. You humble yourself and get out there and make mistakes and learn from your own mistakes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get up and you go over and you apologize to the horse for being an idiot and you get back on and try again. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it takes patience. It takes a, a, a vision. I knew, and, and I'm not anywhere near, I'm not halfway there. I knew years and years and years ago what I wanted to look like as a horseman. I mm -hmm. wanted my, what I wanted my horsemanship, the level I wanted it to be at. And so I have to have the humility and the common sense to look at myself constantly and say, son, you ain't there yet. You're not even close to there yet, you know, and, and just, and just keep studying, keep learning and, you know, keep riding. Did you have like figures in your life, mentors, people that you sort of look to as maybe folks that set the bar? You mean personally or public figures? Per, uh, personally, I guess. Personally, either. Um, there's, there's been, there was one fellow years ago that he taught me more than anybody else personally. Um, and I haven't, I, I don't, I haven't talked to him in years, but there was a, there was a cowboy in Kansas that helped me start Colts years ago. And he taught me more than anybody else personally about horses. Um, and so there was him, but outside of that on a personal level, no, mm. um, and I've watched, you know, seminars and gone to clinics and read books and watched videos and, and all that, you know, studied on my own for years. Just, you you kind of just set that bar for yourself to I be set, as... set the bar for myself. Yeah. And, you know, there, there's been things about horses that I'm like, you know, a particular something, whatever it is. And uh, I've been doing it this way for years. And I'm like, that's not right. 
Hmm. You know, and I keep doing it. I'm like, that is not right. And I just, I would just chew on it and meditate and think about it and just keep trying. And one day it's like a light would come on. I'm like, oh, it should be like this. And it seems like every time that happened, wouldn't be long after that, I'd watch a video from some old time horseman. I mean, some real horseman and he would lay it out and I'm like, well, there it is. So I was right, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, but it's just keep scratching, just keep scratching, keep clawing and, uh, you know, and have the humility to say, I don't think I'm right. Do you think, you know, you've, you've talked since we've been out here and you talk about it a lot on your podcast about how for you, it's important to just kind of take time to just reflect, um, like you said, kind of chew on some of the things that are going on, things that you're, you're doing and not doing. Um, I feel like most of society, we, we don't, we don't take that time. We don't just sit and be quiet and reflect. Um, it's just go, go, go. It's, it's consume. Um, we just devour. We don't really stop to, to think it through. Um, can you talk a little bit about just, just why that's important for you? Um, and if you think that like, it's something that can be, um, like, should others be doing that? Yes. Um, there's, uh, in my opinion, I mean, how can we be the best version of us if we don't know who we are, you know, mm. yeah. and how can we know who we are if we never stop, sit down and realistically, honestly look at ourselves. And how can we sit down and honestly, realistically look at ourselves if we're glued to a phone or a television or a computer game or 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 reading books? I'm I'm big proponent of reading. All right. Um but even when you're reading, and I'm not in any way knocking reading unless you're reading good material, but you're listening to his words. There's times when you just need to sit down and listen to your own words because maybe your words are foolish, but you never realize that your words are foolish because you never stop and listen to your words, you know? Yeah. And so it's just, they're just, there has to be, there has to be periods of solitude and silence. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you, you can't be, you cannot be happy anywhere in the world with anybody in the world if you're not happy with yourself. I mean, you can't because you're closer to yourself than you are to anybody. And yeah. so, yeah, I think um, solitude and reflection and silence is is lost. But I think today that's that's one of the biggest things that we've lost. That's that's playing such a huge part um, in the destruction of society today. Mm. I mean, men. I'll get in trouble here. No. Uh, and so this, you know, there's a lot, come on, say that. I, I talk to men a lot. So I, I grew up, I'm going to take a rabbit trail here. Yeah, go okay? for it, please. So I've got three younger sisters. I was the only boy. So it was me and my three sisters. My three sisters were very, we were raised in the house. They were very, um, they were very feminine. Okay. And I don't mean that in any kind of bad way. Um, but they were not tomboys. They were not outside, you know. And so I was by myself, all right? And so I didn't hang out with my sisters. I didn't hang out. And so I'm most comfortable talking to guys, relating to guys. And so it's by, and I, you know, I get a lot of comments about this on the channel. It, it's not that I'm saying this doesn't apply. Uh, it's just, that's just how I relate, and that's how I communicate and come across. Um and then, so I chased that rabbit and forgot what I was actually after. Well, we were talking about like uh, nowadays. It's almost like seems like it's a sin to be a manly man. Yeah. Well, it it's in some circles it is, but in other circles it it's it's um, a complete ignorance of what being a manly man consists of. What is the point of being a masculine manly man if you're a stupid man? <laughs> what is the point? Mm. Okay. And and but what is the point of being a brilliant studied, educated, whatever, uh, if you're a weakling. Everything in life that has any value is balance. There's a balance. There has to be a balance. And today, men have lost the balance. You know, they can go out 
you know, you have men who can go to the gym and they can, and they can work out and they're very strong, you know, and they can drink a lot of booze and before they get drunk, you know, or whatever, all these manly traits, but they can't read a book. They can't sit down and, and have an intelligent discussion about a deep subject that matters to people, you know, so we've, we've lost our balance. Um, you can't have all noise and no silence, but then again, you can't have all silence. I mean, we can't shave our heads and go live in a cave in the mountain and that's not helping anybody, right. you know? So, I mean, there has to be a balance to everything. And, you know, we talk about that. Everything goes back to horses. When I was young, you know, I didn't come up with this. It's just somebody else said it. And I'm like, yeah, that that was me too. You know, we're 90% brawn and 10% brains. You know, but as I get older, I'm like, man, I'm 90% brains and 10% brawn. And, uh, you know, try to find that balance in horsemanship of getting the horse where I want the horse but listening to the horse where the horse wants me, you know, that's a, that's a new concept for a lot of folks, but it's just, everything's balanced. Everything should be balanced. And I think we've lost that. So is this like a passion of yours to let people like know that? Like, why did you put this, you're, you, you got a Wrangler school and you got a YouTube dry Creek Wrangler school. What made you want to just like, I don't just talk to the camera, like ab about, struggles was it comments was it like wh why did you like that first no, video that so content yep i mean that that was that was it so you know we did there's times i don't always have a horse available and there's times where i i don't have like the weather's bad you know or or, or just whatever and one of the things they told me, it's like, if, if you want your channel to do anything, you've got to be consistent with content. So there was at one point we had, I think Deanna and I were coming out to Idaho last summer. Uh, and that's where we came to this place the first time. And so I was on the road and I didn't have a horse, didn't have a saddle, didn't have anything. I'm like, you know, I need to put something out. I need content. And I had a thought, you know, I, we, my wife and I, we've raised seven children and, uh, you know, they're all grown now, all good, good, upstanding adults. And, uh, but you know, I, and there's young people in our life and I had a thought in my head and uh, so, and I don't remember which one it was. Um, but I just, cause I needed content and this was on my heart anyhow. So I just sat down and, and just talked to the camera about it. And it went boom. I'm like, well, that wasn't the plan. You know, that, that wasn't. And, but then I started getting comments on the channel. I started getting young people asking questions and emailing and saying, look, I'm having trouble with this, man. That really resonated. I, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, the answer to that one is actually pretty straightforward. So I do a video answering that and it boom. One just dog tailed after the other, and that and it just it it wasn't intended. It just happened. One of the videos that I saw of you, I think the first video I saw of you was someone had taken it and put it on TikTok of you talking about, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with women. I love women. I respect women, but I'm a man and I do man stuff. Right. And that one, there were thousands of different versions out there, and I was just like. That. That's when I first came across you, right. and I was like, that's interesting. And you talked about there being an all-out attack, or, or, or I forget how you worded it. There's an all-out attack on on uh, masculinity, at least in this country. Um, and, uh, and that's just nonsense. It's just, it, it's self-destructive is what it is. Um, and folks will stand up and say, and I'm not going to deny, you know, women have, in a lot of ways, you know, women have been not treated well by men over the years. Um, but I talk about that pendulum, you know, a pendulum swings this way. And so somebody gets reactionary and so they react against it, but they react against it so strong that the pendulum swings too far back this way. And we're just swinging crazy. There's where's the balance, you know, where's the balance. Um, but 
And there's a, the family's been under attack. I've been saying that for years. I'm like, fix the country by fixing the family. It's been so destroyed. The family has been under attack, which, well, you look at television. We don't have a television, but I see stuff here and there. For years now, on television, dads are depicted as the biggest idiots. You know, it's a direct attack. And so you take a small child who's sitting there watching the TV and his entire life from his cartoons up through the sitcoms, up through the drama series, up through his movies, his entire life, every dad he's ever seen portrayed was a complete idiot and a buffoon. How is he going to maintain respect for his own father? And how is he going to maintain then respect for himself as a man? Wow. Because he's been taught his entire life that he is, his gender is the cause for all the problems in the world. And he's a failure and he's a fool. Uh, and he's, he's abusive just based on what his gender is. If he happens to be masculine about it, you know? And so then we wonder what in the world's happened out there. And there's a lot of young men, I think that are waking up and saying, no, I don't think this is the truth. I don't know what the truth is. I don't know where to find it. I don't know what to do with it if I do find it, but I don't think this is the truth. And so they're searching, you know? And so in this deal, it's just kind of happened. It wasn't what I set out. I just kind of want to be the calm voice of reason. You know, um, there's a lot of raging maniacs, angry, angry people out there lobbying bombs over the other side. And I just want to be that, that calm voice of reason. You know, hey, guys, it's all right, you know. We talked about that last night over the fire, about how it's kind of a little sad that people don't have that in their life. There's not someone around them showing them the way, how to be a good man, how to be strong, how to protect your family, but also how to be kind. And it's beautiful that you're able to come in and, and like, kind of share your wisdom, things you've learned, things from horses and how horses relate to humans, how to, how, how to talk to a horse, how to, uh, you know, yeah. uh, train a horse and how to train yourself in a way. Um, it's yeah, like I said, it's a little sad that it's, we have to go to the internet to find inspiration. And, but however, I also find it, it's beautiful that one guy now can be influencing millions of people. Um, does that weigh heavy on you a little bit? It, it weighs, it, my wife would tell you it weighs really heavy because this is a, like I said, this isn't what I set out to do. Um, you know, I didn't, I, there are guys who go to school. I want to be a, uh, a psychologist. I want to be a therapist. I want to be this. I want to be a counselor. You know, they go to school and they pursue it. That's what they want to do. You know, that, that wasn't. And so when I get, and I, you'd be surprised how many, uh, when I get a comment from someone to say, I was sitting on the bed last night getting ready to end it all. And for whatever reason, I saw this video and it gave me the hope and the courage to carry on. That's, and I get a lot of those and that, yeah, that's heavy. What do you do with that? You know, like I make another video. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if the situation physically changed very much, I'd shut everything down and go to the mountains and disappear. You'd have to burn the stump and sift the ashes to find me. I mean, if that's, but I'm like, and then I read one of that and I'm like, well, I guess that's not what I'm supposed to do. And so I keep doing, I just keep doing what I'm doing. I just find it's so interesting. You're a guy who's living kind of like someone did in 1800 and you're loving it. Um, but yet you have this YouTube channel you're reaching millions of people and it's weighing, it weighs heavy on you, but you almost, it's almost, is it a calling right now to, to keep this going this, with the school and everything obviously is, is your passion, but the YouTube. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's calling. I don't know. I do feel like right now it's an obligation and it may be the same thing. Mm. I just know right now it's, it's something. <clears throat> so we've got the school. Uh, which is, um, the, the students show up, school starts, we have orientation on Sunday night 
and then they leave on Saturday morning after breakfast, and then the next bunch comes in on Sunday afternoon. <clears throat> so it's full time. Add the podcast. I was doing two podcasts a week, and it just got to be too much. And then we have the YouTube channel, and then all the business that goes along with all three of those. So my wife is actively trying to get me to cut back on something. She says just too much. And, uh, you know, but <clears throat> right now, I'm like, you know, I don't know what to cut back on. I'm behind a week on, on the YouTube videos, and I got to get one out. But I, I feel like there's there's an obligation there somehow, you know, if somebody needs a little bit of encouragement, then we can encourage it. But we're like, I'm tired. I don't feel like it. We turn around and walk away. You know, who wants to be that guy? You know, I don't. Damn. I don't know. Right now, we're just doing what we're doing. and It's a lot of work, man. Yeah. It's a uh, whole family operation, too. Your your family has been wonderful. We've been here a couple of days, and your, your daughter is your chef for folks to come through. Right. You know, your wife is so involved in the business aspect and, um, you know, you've got your, so my, your my wife a runs the business. Runs, okay. I, so more I than just involved. The she school. is the business. She's she the is the business. <laughs> All right. When I said a while ago, I hate the business side of things. Yeah. There wouldn't be a school without her. Uh, she takes all the calls. She makes all the bookings. She does the paperwork. Uh, and then she mamas everybody. Everybody mm. calls her mama. And, uh, yeah. And then my youngest son, Will, he's been here. He'll be here for another couple months. He's been helping with the horses. And, and he's been a cowboy in Texas. Texas. Yeah. And I think, has, has he been involved in a few other locations too, or is it just Texas? No, he, he has. He's He guided with me in Alaska, and he cowboyed with me on a ranch in Colorado for a yeah. while. Okay. Yeah. 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 We got to see him up on top of the mountain. A little ways down that way. Actually, a it's yeah. a long, it's quite a ways up to the mountain. We got to see he's, him wrangle horses. He's really horses. talented. Well, yeah. he was trying to teach me how to uh, rope a horse. Yeah. Um, that went well. <laughs> <laughs> or a steer. You got a it. A steer. You got it. Yeah, well, it was a massive steer that was moving very fast. It or was it was stationary. a bucket. You it was entirely <laughs> stationary. Oh, it was a bucket. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it was that little plastic head over it, there. It totally on, was on, on a bucket. bucket. Yeah. Um, yeah. It might have been that milk carton right over there. Yeah. Well, we, it's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, we, so... Our wives are here behind the cameras uh, doing their thing. We came here with our families, but um, we, both Jacob and I, are in business or multiple businesses with our wives as well. So, like, we understand the um, the great journey and adventure and joy, uh, as well as stress and pressure and, uh, you know, difficulty that, that comes with having your family be your business uh, and vice versa. And, uh, it's, it's not something everybody can do. You know, it takes a lot. No. And, and there, I mean, there's, there's no mistake or, or if something happened to either one of us at that moment, Dry Creek Ranger School's done. Hmm. I mean, it's just, it's the two of us doing this, this following this dream, uh, doing this together. But if the good Lord took either one of us home, the school at that minute is done. The, mm. the dream was accomplished. We did what we set out to do. But there's not somebody going to come in and buy this and carry on Dry Creek Wrangler School. Not going to hire a manager. I wouldn't carry on and hire somebody to run the business side. It's, it's us or it's nothing. Mm. And uh, this has truly been a 30-year dream. 20 years. 20, 20 years. years, yeah. Uh, we tried to put together a school— um, Several years ago, I mean, I had the brochures made up. We had stuff, and I just I couldn't. Is this the one you're talking about in Africa? No, that that was a different one. Okay. No, this was before. This was a long time before that. Okay. Um, and uh, and I just couldn't. But you know, I want to. If and my wife and I have both talked about this. If I had succeeded, if we had succeeded when we first tried to start this school twenty years ago. It would have bombed horrifically. Really? Yeah. Because I wasn't ready as a person. Um, my temperament, my personality, my growth, my maturity, I wasn't ready. So that had to fail before this could succeed. And I, I think many times we don't realize that, that 
our failures, when we start out to do something, our failures are blessings in disguise. Mm. We failed at it because we weren't ready to do it. It doesn't mean we're not supposed to do it. It just means we're not the solid, mature, calmer, experienced person who can actually make this work. And so, yeah, it was it was a good thing. It was a good thing that, that it failed back then. That's, that's crazy to say. Yeah. It's a good thing that it failed. And I, I want to point out this. I feel like I see a lot of people, well, this is just who I am. And just it's gonna, you're going to have to just deal with this. This is who I am. As if they're never going to change. Thank God I'm not the same guy I was when I was 25. And I hope when I'm 60, I'm not the same guy I am right now. Right. I hope actually then I can ride a horse. <laughs> um, We're going to get you on a horse tomorrow. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah. He's got a match. You're not allowed to laugh. I got a pony about that talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. So, uh, don't ever dare put sugar in your coffee around Dwayne. He's like, it's in there in the flower. It's in there, sister. Yeah, sister. Yeah. Um, I, I love it, man. This is the, the, I, like I told you before, I get giddy and excited. And I, I've said that maybe this is a flaw in my character. Um, but I love when other people are successful too. Even when I'm losing, I'm like, you know what? I can do that. You know? That's not a flaw though. I mean, that's, that's a, more people need that. You know, more people need to be excited for others, excited for the success. And so without even knowing you and reading his, by, he's got seven kids. I, I'm one of seven. I'm the oldest boy. Like when you're the oldest kids, you're kind of also like helping raise a lot of the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, you know, we've, we've, family businesses. We've had some succeed, some fail. And I was just like, I felt such a kinship with you. And I'm sure a lot of people do as well. But I I loved some of the videos that you had where you talked about just that, where it's just like, it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to, you know, but evaluate, change and move on. Never, never forget that you're a human. Just, I mean, just Try to be the best human you can be, but at your best, you're still just a human. Yeah. You know, and, and we don't, and again, a lot of this today, I'm going to put it back at the feet of television, you know, because people have grown up with an unrealistic depiction of what heroism is, of what courage is, of what kindness is, uh, of what wisdom is. You know, and so our heroes are spotless. You know, they're without blemish. They're without fault on television. You know, we got Superman. We got the Lone Ranger. You know, how he Lone Ranger caught all these bad guys in his suit and never got dirty. You know, <laughs> and, and, you know, and so we grow up thinking that's what it means to be a good guy and I don't measure up. Uh, so why try, you know? What's yeah, funny, yeah. You, you love history as well, right? Absolutely. And I love reading as well. I grew up watching documentaries about history and you see some of these movies where you see these guys, they're heroes, they're flawless guys. They got that jaw line. They're just, I mean, they're buff and they're the hero. They come in and world war two gear and they, they, you know, fight off, you know, the Japanese or, or the Germans. And then you go actually look that guy up in history and he's the shorter kind of a gremlin looking of a guy. And you realize, <laughs> Oh, this man like stormed Normandy beats, you know, went and took out those guys that were mowing down all the guys. And this is the guy who got, you know, it's like, he doesn't look like the hero, but he was. Yeah. You know, I mean, so, some of my biggest heroes in history are Winston Churchill and Theodore Roosevelt. Mm. You know, Winston Churchill was gargantuan. Yep. You know, and his appetites oh were gosh. gargantuan. They were. You know. His schedule. His, yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy. But look at what he did, you know? And I've had people get on the channel when I've talked about how much I respect Churchill. And they say, oh, he did this, he did that. And they look at this. I'm like, yeah, that's the beauty of it. He was a flawed human being and he still accomplished all this, you know? Um, Theodore Roosevelt, you know, same thing. If you get in and really study, he was a flawed human being. Well, nowadays that just that negates everything. It well, negates you messed everything. up once. I'm sorry. Yeah, but so, and, and you know, you take now, you take they're erasing all of our founding fathers because they find that they were humans, they were flawed, you know, and they don't look at look at the tremendous things that were right that they did. 
changing the course of the world. The world. The world. You know, but today it's like somebody does something that's at least a bit flawed and they're canceled. Yep. And they're canceled. So people are like, you know, I can't measure up, so I won't try. God, and that I'm, makes me so mad. Like what happened used to like failure used to be a thing. Like, okay, you failed and then you succeeded. Good on you. But now it's just like, oh, you failed. That's it. Move yeah. on to the next person. So I just want to, you know, I just try to encourage people. Hey, your, your humanity, that is your glory. You know, that is your glory. Your failure and then your getting back up. The man who never fell, the man who never fell has no glory. The man who fell and got back up. That's where his glory is. The man who fell 20 times and got up 21 times, that man has even greater glory. Wow. That man has more courage, way more courage than the guy who was so strong from birth that he never fell. There's no glory in that. You know, it's it's not. And so I just, you know, I just try to encourage guys. It's like, hey, we're humans, and but we have inside of us, we have a courage. And we have a determination and we can have a strength and a gentleness at the same time. Uh, and that's our glory. Our glory comes from our faults. Accomplishing what we accomplish in spite of our faults. And without the faults, there is no glory because there's no victory. And uh, so, you know, the... All the failures in business, all the failures in everything, you know, as a husband, as a father, all that stuff. But, you know, we look where we are today and say, we didn't quit. We kept on. And, and, and so it's like, yeah. And I had someone, um, I did a, sh I just did a short, um, Instagram reel, you know, just the horses right now. And, and some guy commented, and this is not a poke against him. He was just making an observation. And so I'm just conversing back, you know. He said, some of us don't have the resources to live that life. None of us have the resources to live that life. My daddy was a Baptist preacher. I was born in Kentucky. I've had glasses since I was 14. I weighed 125 pounds when I graduated high school. I was not an athlete, did not grow up with horses, never had a horse. All right. We were poor as Job's turkey. All right. So when you don't have the resource to accomplish this, you build the resource and you start building resources. My dad was a tremendous auto mechanic, and I've seen him stand there looking at a vehicle, and he needed a specialty tool to work on this vehicle. And I've watched him go and take a wrench and take a blowtorch and start twisting <laughs> and, and bending that wrench and then cut part of it off and then take another piece of steel and get a welder and weld it. He didn't have the resource to fix the car, so he went and built the resource first. I love it. And then took it and fixed the car. And if you have a dream of where you're going, you don't look at, I don't have the resources to get there. None of us do, man. So you start building the resources in order to build the dream. You build the hammer and you build the nails with which you're going to build the house. Hmm. If you sit there and say, well, I can't build a house because there ain't no hardware store nearby, you don't want a house very bad. You know. So it's not a lack of resources. It's a lack of courage. Wow, that's that's good stuff. Powerful stuff. Ah, uh, man, I didn't know your dad was a Baptist preacher. My father was a Baptist yeah. preacher, um, and so I grew up in that world. Um, so, I mean, God, do do you believe in God? I mean, do you feel like it plays a role in our lives? I do. Um, I mean, I'm 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 born again. I I believe that Jesus Christ, um, you know, is the only redemption for mankind and uh, I believe that you know his death on the cross paid the price for our sin and it's the only way to the father uh and yeah you can't you can't leave out the role that God and his plan in our relationship with him plays um but I have a I have a very um 
troubled past with organized religion. And so I'm not much in that arena anymore. I'll just put it like that. Well, just to you know, fill you in, I feel like my father and my mother put in everything into this, these churches that we worked with. And it felt like it just chewed us up and spit us out, yeah. broke and broken. And we felt like a pariah to the church people. And then we felt like regular people didn't like us or we were, uh, you know, those people, the Christians. Yeah. And I made a choice young to not turn from that. Um, I would agree. Organized religion, I have a kind of a hard, I, yeah. I, I have a problem with it. Right. But a lot of my friends turned away. They don't go to church. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in Jesus. And that was something I was like, no, I actually truly do believe in a God. I was like, I look at the world. I look at the universe. I'm like, I just don't think this just came from nothing, right. man. Right. And I appreciate the fact that you talked about it because a lot of people are afraid to talk about God. Yeah. No, I didn't lose, I didn't lose my faith. You know, nothing like that. It's just, um, Somehow over the years, the church has lost its ability to get out of its own way yeah. and to get out of God's way. And I just didn't want to be a part of it anymore. I 100% I agree with that. Because yeah. a lot of times I felt like the religion got in the way of me actually having a relationship with God. Right. I was so worried about what that person would think. That person would think that I wasn't actually reading the Bible. I wasn't praying. I wasn't, I was so worried about what man thought. And I was like, this is, this is, this is a religion. Yeah. And some people, I feel like they do need some structure to help right. them, but, um, and that's not every, I mean, that's not everybody's experience and that's not every no, church, you know, no. like we, we all go to, you know, our church and I think, um, that faith community for me is a big reason why I keep going, you yeah. know, it's, it's the people, it's the, you know, it's the, that, um, you know, support system. And I think that, um, you know. You're a pretty solitary guy. And so, you know, for you, that certainly may not be, you know, a necessity. But This you know, church is the horse and the wilderness. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, for me, yeah. I, I need the I need the group. And I, you know, so it, but it's not to say that um, the, the church community is, isn't, um, like, there's plenty of opportunity for bad things and bad people. Yeah, and, you, you uh, don't, you don't, it's like anything, anything else in life. You don't want to paint with too broad a brush. Yeah. You know, um, and I, by no means, I don't, all of, all of my children, uh, you know, they all attend services regular and, uh, you know, and we fully support it. And so it's, it's not an attack against anything or anybody. Oh, yeah. It's no, just I... where, where we got. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I've been relatively open, you know, that I'm a man of, of faith on there, but I don't talk about that. And that's a conscious decision. And my dad and I had this discussion. He wanted to know why I didn't, you know, discuss it more openly and actively on the channel. That kind of bothered him. And uh, but I'm like, there's, there are places all over this planet, more or less, where you can go and somebody will be happy to tell you about Jesus. Hmm. You know, but you can't go to church at least the churches I've been in and be told how to be a good man. There's a lot of quote unquote Christian men out there that don't know how to be good, calm, solid, dependable men. And it has nothing to do with religion. And so I'm like, here's a message that needs to be out and it needs to not be filtered um, it needs to not be filtered and, you know, and I have, and, and that, you know, I have Christians that get on the channel and they kind of, uh, reprimand me. Really? Yeah. The Christians reprimand me more than anybody. <laughs> really? Yeah. Those Christians. It's, it's Dave and yeah. I were on their life. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I was like, I can see the signature there. <laughs> no, but, but they're like, you know, all this is foolishness. All you need is Jesus. You just need Jesus. We get that sometimes too. And, but, but I, you know, I'm like, well, listen, so if you're saying that, that means you believe in Jesus and you believe the Bible. All right. So God, the father had Jesus born under the tutelage of Joseph, 
who is a godly and honorable man. Why? Because God needed to be taught how to be a good man mm. by another good man. And if God, now I'm going to get hung for this, I'm going to be burnt <laughs> in effigy for this, okay? <laughs> but when God became man, I believe that he was, Jesus was God, all God and all man. Mm. When God became man, if his God side wasn't enough, how in the world can us just knowing God be enough? Mm. If all we need to do is know God, we don't need the Proverbs. We don't need Ecclesiastes. We don't need the parts of the Bible that tell us how to live right. Jesus didn't need Joseph. Mm -hmm. Isaac didn't need Abraham. They didn't need good godly fathers, good solid men, teaching them how to be good solid men. We can just be flippant. You just need religion. You just need God. Well, I've been in church. I was eight days old in the first service I went to. Wow. As soon as my mom got out of the house. Been my whole life. Church is full of men that ain't got a clue on how to be good men. And they've been under the Bible their whole life. So, yeah, I agree with that. I don't buy it. Yeah. And I just got fired up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I get fired up with that, too, because I've been in churches where— um, I've heard guys say, there's no reason on earth why you should be violent. And I'm like, are, are you kidding me? Like, I've got five sisters. I've had to fight off a few idiots in my life. I'm, I'm pretty sure violence was the answer. Well, no, it's not. The, you know, that's what they, they would tell yeah. me. And I'm like, a good godly man wouldn't be, uh, you know, riled to anger. I was like, I wasn't angry. I was pissed. <laughs> like, Well, like, yeah. So the Bible is filled with stories of violence on behalf yeah. of the kingdom of God. I mean, you know. David, we, everybody talks about David and Goliath and how, you know, David defeated a giant. After he defeated the giant, he cut off the giant's head with the giant's own sword. Well, um, what a gangster move. Right? <laughs> well, let's go to Jesus cleaning out the temple. Yeah. He walked in and saw the money changers and how they were polluting the temple. He calmly turned around and walked back out of the temple, went and found the materials and made himself a whip, a cat of nine tails, and went back in with deliberate <laughs> malice aforethought and violently, physically overthrew the tables and drove them out of the temple. Hmm. Jesus Christ, gangster move. Gangster move. <laughs> I, I want to talk about, I love your slogan on your website. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's don't do more, do less, better. Right. I saw that and I laughed out loud. I was like, where was this t-shirt when I was like, <laughs> yeah. like, which by the way, that has to be a t-shirt. It, it's, it's, we're working on it. It's on its way. Look, you put that as a link, you will sell thousands of those. Yeah. But tell me about that. Well, that's just, that's just horsemanship. People that don't know, like they're having trouble with a horse and they don't know, they go get a bigger bit. They get down and they lunge the thing around the round pen for 30 minutes. They're just, I, I don't, my horse has a problem. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what to do about it. So I'm going to do more. I'm going to lunge my horse more. I'm going to run my horse more. I'm going to get a bigger bit. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. When a lot of times they just need to just slow down. Don't do more. What you've been doing, you've been doing wrong. That's why your horse has the problem. So instead of just doing more, do less, but do it the right way. You know, and, and so then it carries across, you know, to all of life. You don't have to read more books, just read better books. You know, you don't have to have more friends, just have better friends. You Sorry, know? Dave, you're gone. <laughs> hey, <no. laughs> he's family, he's married, yeah, he's you're married stuck in. with him. Yeah, that's right. A big focus of our channel is, you know, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. And I think that, you know, there's this whole uh, season that we're all in of this hustle culture. And I think there's there's people that want to do 10 different things and they want to do them all at once and they want to do them, you know, 100 miles an hour. And uh, that message of, you know, doing less, just do it better. I think that people need focus and patience. And, and I say that like, like we need that in our own we business, do. you know, whether it's chasing mountains or it's other things that we're pursuing individually, like that, that um, recognizing that things take time to, to make them great. And it takes focus. And sometimes that focus means that you can't do a hundred other things. Wasn't it Abraham Lincoln that said something like, if I'm given four hours to chop down a tree, I'm going to spend three hours sharpening the ax. Yeah. yeah. We lost that. You know? Wow. 
That's brilliant. And we don't sharpen the axe. We don't. You know, we, we go out, like when I when I go out, I I get an outside horse in that's got an issue that I'm working with. A lot of times, that horse is set out there. I'll go work him a little bit just to see where he's at. And it may be two days before I go back out, but I'll spend those two days thinking, I'm going to. I'm going to do this. Now, when I do that, he's going to do this. Now, I'm going to respond to that calmly with this right here. And so the entire thing, now, I may go out there and he may totally change things up, but it's still, there's a plan, you know, and so I'll have it where I just don't go out there willy-nilly. Whatever he is, whatever he's going to do, I'm going to emotionally jump in and we're, we're going to fix this horse. I'll spend a lot of time just, just thinking, just watching the horse out there, watching how he reacts with other horses, move him around in the pen a little bit, watch his ears, watch his eyes, see how he reacts to me. Uh, maybe I'll get on him and see how he fights the bit, what he does, and then I'll, I'll be like, I'm going to sharpen the axe for a little bit. And then when I think the axe is sharp, okay, I've got a handle on this horse, I think, and I think this is a path I need to go with this horse, then I will go start. I will do less but I will attempt to do it better. When you spend all that time uh, thinking through the, the psychology of a horse, does that, do you feel like that helps you with, when, when you go to talk about like human beings and our insight and our own psychology and like, I, I hear you'd make those analogies sometimes. I mean, does that- Well, horses, you can't, I mean, horses don't think, it's, it's nothing like humans, you know? But what it does, it does teach you, it encourages you to um, step outside of your own emotion mm. and your own thought process and to learn to put yourself in the shoes of somebody totally different and to understand why they're coming from the direction that they're coming from. Um, yeah. A species that's totally different. Totally different. I mean, we eat meat, and they are meat. So they look at everything totally different, you know. There's two things you cannot have working horses. There's two things that have to completely dissipate and disappear. And one is pride, and the other is time. The horse doesn't operate on a clock. He doesn't know the clock. He didn't know you got this much time. Okay, you have to leave your clock. You gotta leave your watch in the house. You go out there and you're like, I've got this much time. You're gonna start getting frustrated because you're not accomplishing what you think you should accomplish in set amount of time. So you gotta leave your time behind and you gotta leave your pride behind. There's no room for either one of them. Sounds like starting a business. Yeah. Throw your pride aside. Lord knows I've started a few businesses. <laughs> in, the, in the calendar. In the calendar. <laughs> but I, do you feel like horses have just can train people in life in general? I think, I think for a lot of life, they're a perfect metaphor. The three of us dealing with each other as humans, there's no room in I, any of us for arrogance. Horses will teach you that. Hmm. Horses will teach you that you're not going to get anywhere with arrogance with that horse. So there's things, yes, we can learn. There's great carryovers and crossovers between your relationship with a horse. And that's one of the main focuses that we teach her at the school is we teach relationship with a horse, not from the touchy feely fuzzy, but from communication. If you and I are sitting here having a conversation, it's communication. Communication is me speaking to you and then me listening to you as you speak back. There's too much in horsemanship today that that second half doesn't exist. Uh, the horse is telling you something. The horse is always telling you something. We just don't listen, which that's true in, you know, that's true in marriage. <laughs> you know, your wife is always telling you something. And most of the time, the biggest thing she's telling you is when she's not speaking at all. That's so hard, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I threw you an easy one right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, so, so yeah, the horsemanship. And human relationships, although horses and humans are two totally different species, totally different instincts, if we can humble ourselves to actually develop a communicative relationship with a horse, then we can do it with a fellow human being. Hmm. We're, we're in the process, I think, of learning some of that with raising kids. 
Um, yeah. You know, and uh, sometimes when you have your own your own timeline and you have your own plan for how things are going to go, that, that teaches you some humility and uh, removes some arrogance as well, I feel like. Do you agree with that? Ugh, yeah. So with seven kids, man, we need advice. I've got two kids, one four, <laughs> one that's two, and he's got a six-month-old? Or she know. almost won. She's she's almost one now. Um in like a couple like a less than a couple of weeks. Yeah. I, I learned a lot from my father. You know, he had a ton of things he did great. He says he has some his own regrets. Um and I'm one who wants to learn from other people. I want to be a good father. Like I really, really do. My father was, I feel like, better than his father, and his father was better than so and so. And I want to do that as well. I want to raise a strong man for my son and a, and a, a, and a, a beautiful daughter who's also strong. Like, I, you know, I'm pretty sure your daughter is stronger now God, than, she, your, yeah. son, than her older brother. I woke up from her <laughs> kicking me in the face at five o'clock this morning. Yeah. But like, man, give us some advice. Throw us a bone. We need some help here. <laughs> Horsemanship and raising children. Both. is like holding a wet bar of soap. <laughs> wait, wait, I suck at that. I Hold on a second. I hope there's more to this. So, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so if you squeeze it too tight, okay. it's going to slip out of your hands. Okay. If you don't hold it tight enough, it's going to slip out of your hands. It's like everything else in life, it's balance. If you're too lenient, if you're too soft, you're going to raise a brat that's disrespectful to themselves and to the world around them. If you're too harsh, if you're too much of a disciplinarian, you're going to raise something totally different. So it's balance. They have to have the boundaries. There has to be clear set boundaries. Children get so much security. They know that's the boundary. And they know if they cross that line, this is the results of it. There's tremendous security in that. Uh, they don't have to wonder. That's, and and so, but, but coupled with that, there has to be the love and the tenderness and the fun, which is, that's one, that was my biggest mistakes as a father. I was a very strict disciplinarian. And, and when my daughters came along and I have four beautiful, wonderful daughters, um, I had, but the difficulty I had with that was I was raised with three sisters that I did not connect with. I didn't hang around with. I didn't. And so when I had four daughters, it's like, I don't relate well to girls, you know, to little girls. And so I wasn't as, I wasn't the kind of father um, that they deserved, that they should have had as far as that fun, you know, tender, comforting, strong. Um, I was kind of like, mama knows how to raise girls. I'll let mama raise the girls and I know how to raise boys. I'll raise the boys. So the boys was all about, horses and cutting firewood and working and being a man, you know, guns and shooting and all this stuff. And, uh, so my girls, they, they missed out on a lot growing up and my boys got a lot that they wish they didn't get mm -hmm. growing up, you know? So it was, it's, it just comes down to balance. You got to balance the discipline, which has to be there and the boundaries, which have to be there. Um, but that has to be balanced with the fun and the joy of childhood. You can't take the one away from them and you can't refuse to give them the other one. And so if I were to, in a nutshell, that's about as nutshelled as I can get right there. I feel like it's good advice though. It's, mm, it's, yeah. it's hard to apply it sometimes when they're screaming in the van for 16 hours on the way to see Dwayne <laughs> in Wyoming. <laughs> Uh, it's hard to be balanced. Then. It's hard to be yeah. balanced when you want to um, put them in your vehicle and drive, <laughs> drive <laughs> off. So be be creative. Okay. All right. That's that is your greatest weapon and your greatest tool as a parent is a creative sense of imagination and stepping outside the box when it comes to dealing with a new thing with your child because they don't know this isn't how everybody does it. That's true. Okay. So when my two oldest boys, when they were quite a bit younger, they uh, they were bickering and fussing a lot at one point, like boys do. And uh, so mama got all frustrated and, and, you know, like mamas do. 
And she brought them to the daddy, like mamas <laughs> do. And I said, all right, go get me a roll of duct tape. Uh-oh. Oh. And she's she's over <laughs> saying, don't tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to take him to the train station. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought him, stood in front of him. I said, all right, I had enough of this. So I took, they were facing me side by side, so I duct taped their wrists together. <laughs> On just one hand, not both hands, yeah, just yeah. one hand, all right? I said, so everything you boys do for the rest of the day, you got to work it out together. Oh, so you tied them both together? Yeah, I tied okay. that duct tape so yeah. they're his right hand to his left hand. All right, so the rest of the day, you guys have to, you got to learn to communicate and work it out together. How'd that go? It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they come to me about an hour later. One of them came to me and said, Daddy, what? I got to go potty. <laughs> I said, well. Work it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and I mean, they're, you know, they're best buddies I today. I, I mean, it. but it, it was, it was unconventional. But, you know, f look at your child. Your child is not in a book. All right. That's a child. That's not a character in a book. That's not a case study in a book. That's a human being with their own personality, their own thought process, their own likes, their own dislikes, their own fears, their own prides and everything so fit it to that child you know whatever it is and just just be you know sometimes sometimes you you got to step back you got to say you know what this child needs uh this child just needs a day with dad at the park or this boy needs to go out there and dig about four post holes three <laughs> foot deep that's what he needs yep. you know but it's it's just it's no different than working horses. My horses are all separate personalities. And when they have an issue, it's I've been sitting on the fence. I've been standing out there smoking a cigar, drinking coffee, watching my horses. So when a horse has an issue, I'm like, ah, oh, that particular horse, I know what that horse needs. And I'll just go out and deal with it, not according to what some book told me that a horse needs, but what my knowledge and experience with the individuality and the personality of that horse that's what that horse needs. And I will go out and take care of that horse according to what that horse needs. Your children are no different. Um, you can't treat them all the same. You can't, you know, you can't say, well, Dr. Spock says this is what I'm supposed to do. That's a little tiny human being, you know, but it's an individual. They're, that's the only one out of 8 billion on the planet. That's the only one of that one right there. So what does that do? child need right now maybe that child needs a smack on the bottom <laughs> my kids are already grown you can't put me in jail for that all right <laughs> or maybe he needs a hug maybe he needs tickled maybe that child's laying down there crying and maybe that you just go down and start tickling that child mm -hmm. you know life has just got too heavy for his little two-year-old brain you know bring the fun back into it or pull out your video camera little rascal's Throwing a fit and getting down on the floor. Well, instead of being a hostage, what he's trying to do, I say, well, that's pretty interesting. Get your camera out and video him. <laughs> say, hey, can you scream that again? I didn't hear that that time. I didn't get that. Oh, man, I think, oh, okay, there it is. And, vi and after, he's going to get embarrassed every bit, and he's going to say, well, this didn't have the effect that I expected it to have. Mm. So I guess I just won't do this anymore. And it's successful parenting. You know, it's just. It's, oh, I love it. It's funny, you know, we I've always uh in seeing other parents identify when their kid is hungry. They'll say, Oh no, he's just hungry or you know, she's just tired or she needs this or that. Um I never understood how how did they know that? Like what well, how do you understand that? And and here we are, you know, about a year in with our daughter and we, we know very you know. quickly. We know yeah. she's hungry or we yeah. know she's tired or we know that she did this or didn't do that or needs this. Um and when you spend time you know, I think with, whether it's your children or whether it's a yeah. horse or whether it's just other people in your life, when you know them and you're invested in them as an individual, yeah. you can you can pick up on that. Well, you, you pick up on that, but you need to have the wisdom to know that you don't have to give in to that mm. immediately all the time. Sure, yeah. All right, if your child is hungry, and I don't mean, you know, a poor child starving. I mean, it's been two hours since they've eaten and they're hungry. They ain't going to die. <laughs> right. Well, you... You've seen my daughter. I've, she could go. She, she, could, go she, could, go, she could go a while. <laughs> she could go a week. She's a chunky monkey. I love but it. She, okay. But she thinks if she's got to go yeah. two hours, she's going to die. So, so if you have an adult, if you have an adult today, 
that cannot tell their appetite no. Yeah. They started out as a baby whose parent would not tell their appetite no for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. I want to eat right now. Supper's in 20 minutes. You'll eat with the rest of us. Or I want to eat want, that thing. Yeah. That, that I, maybe I, I want have. a snack. I want a Pop-Tart. I want this. No. I heard you I, and your son talking about Pop-Tarts today. Now I yeah. want a Pop-Tart. <laughs> Thanks, Dwayne. <laughs> Do we I, have Pop-Tarts? I, I think he's actually had this, this argument I with his son. We've, we've, we've had about, this conversation oh, did before. You? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, it's an adult who has physical control is raised as a child who was taught physical control. Mm. We give them everything just to stop their whining. Well, you teach them to be a whiny adult to get what they want because they want everything. And it's like, no, you, you'll be all right. You know, our kids, whatever mama made for supper, that was supper. I don't want pinto beans. Well, then don't eat the pinto beans. I want macaroni and cheese. No, we're having pinto beans, but I don't want pinto beans. Then don't eat the pinto beans. You can go play. Self-discipline is what is that? Guess what they're having for breakfast tomorrow morning? <laughs> pinto beans. Pinto beans. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know, and so after a while they're like, well, going through life, expecting life to give me everything I want, that doesn't work out very well. And being thankful, because by the time they get hungry enough, they're going to be thankful for those pinto beans. Mm -hmm. And learning to be thankful for what's put in front of you as an adult is taught as a child by parents who have the courage to be the bad guy. I know you don't like me right now. I know you're mad at me right now. But it's good for you. And it's tough. It's and tough to be that parent. It, it is tough to be that parent. Yeah. Man, I, do you have any other questions? I got one last one. I kind of want to, unless you, I mean, I, I got a I million. Go. You guys, I'm going to get so canceled from this podcast. <laughs> no, I, sorry. <laughs> We're already canceled. YouTube has already been putting a threshold on us. I could, um, go, I could go the rest of the night asking I, questions, but go ahead. Just I want to know what your dreams are for this place. Clearly you guys are in love of this place and what you do. What's your dreams for this place? Um, Actually, we love what we're doing right now, where we're at right now, but we we have accomplished the dream. So everything from this point on is gravy on the biscuit. Wow. Um, and so it's um, don't really so dreams and plans are two different things. We we plan on next year, you know, doing the same thing. Year after that, we plan on the school having the school still here, but uh, expanding some of the experiences um a bit more and it's like I, some sheep thing i heard about what was that sheep well not sheep what was the oh mama sheep wagon <laughs> sheep wagon oh, yeah yeah <laughs> she's wanted to expand get a sheep wagon yeah. he was oh. like offended by the idea of so, sheep he's oh, like sheep. <laughs> what is wrong with you do you know how close we are to johnson county right now yeah he about came up and hit me didn't yeah. he <laughs> um oh. and uh so Building this and succeeding in it was the dream. And so we're living the dream and there's not a future dream. There's just enjoying what we got right now. Well, we're proud of you. Yeah. And I can't believe you opened our home up to us for a couple of days. We're staying in this beautiful house and tomorrow we get to ride horses. Um, <laughs> you showed us where to go to get cowboy hats. Um, but I, but I wouldn't let you get a stampede string. No. Thank no. you for that. Yeah, you've so, been a big faux pas. So the, I'm looking after you, man. Yeah, the rule here that. is um, if you lose your hat while you're riding a horse, you have to buy the beer. Now, we oh, were wondering. Oh, no, you, it's drinks. It's not regulated the, oh, to beer. Okay. Yeah. No, oh, no Bud could, Lights? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get you. Canceled. He's trying hard. Oh my goodness! I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we had last week. We had we had a class. We've had a couple of classes. Of course, it's windy in Wyoming, mm -hmm. and folks, are, I'm going to Ranger School. I need a cowboy hat. And they won't get one that fits. And they get up on top. That wind gets blowing or something. The hat blows off. It's like everybody cheers. Yay. <laughs> so we load up, head down the evening, and go down the Wyoming bar. And whoever lost their hat buys drinks for everybody. Fortunately for them, I'm not a heavy drinker. It yeah. really cost them. Is that why your boy was trying to get us to get one extra size bigger hat? It, it is. <laughs> yeah. He's riding really fast and look up a lot. Yeah, and look up a lot. you got to watch that boy. He's, yeah. Yeah. He's a good kid. Yeah. 
I he sits a horse well, doesn't he? Man, he's good. Yeah. He's, he's good. so good. He come over that mountain um, wrangling those horses, and I was just like, he is way cooler than I am. <laughs> like, well, especially sitting up on that horse with yeah. like mountain ranges in the background, just kind of like. I mean, that was like the most cowboy stuff you've ever seen anywhere in Hollywood well, or whatever. You want to know what? Here's a cowboy move he did, and kind of badass. My tire's flat. It's been it's been leaking. We pump it up, and there's no tires anywhere. We can't find a tire to replace it. So we're up on the mountain, right? And we go up. They see the tires flat. They know it, so they're concerned about us. Well, we stop because my kid was having a freak out, and he wanted to see his mom. And we we're like, hey, look, if you calm down, you know, we'll let you see your mom. We did. We calmed down, so we let him go see his mom. Well, we stopped to trade out vehicles because the girls were behind us. They were already way ahead. They were worried about us. So he gets out, gets the horse ready, and comes riding over the hill like a like a like a knight in shining armor. He, he like y'all need us. me help. I'm like, this is such a cowboy move right here. <laughs> we're like, we're good. We're just got a bratty kid screaming. <laughs> Which your dog Waylon, yeah. was, was right on his heels, oh, just yeah. like making sure everything was good yeah. too. But it was so cool. He just like came back to make sure we were okay, and they were going to help trade it to uh, you know change a tire if they needed to. And it's good people. Yeah. The, everybody around here is so good. Like the these are the people like I grew up with. Like the type of. You know, oh, you need something? We're here to help you. Yeah. Not just keep on driving, ignoring anything, you know. So I, I just want you to know how much we appreciate you being here uh, or letting us be here. And um, I'm excited about tomorrow. Uh, I've learned a lot. Um, your wife is pretty cool. We I got up at 5 o'clock this morning, and we watched uh, the sunrise. She's and out here every morning at sunrise. She's a smart morning. lady. I know she is. Full of a lot of wisdom. Yeah. She about had me tear up this morning t telling me stories. She'll do that, but that's just because she grabs me by the ear and yeah. scabs my head and causes me to tear up. <laughs> she's tough. She's she's of Irish descent. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. You're comfortable saying that with her right there? <laughs> I, man, this has been so much fun. I, Dave, I mean, take us yeah, out, just, man. I mean, if you want the full experience, you know, of what it's like to live live this cowboy life this wrangling life and you want the foundation to go along with it i mean this this could not be a better place to do it as far as i'm concerned yeah. i mean um i know there's a waiting list but sign up for it for sure sign for up sure. for it we're gonna get you to start doubling your price so that uh <laughs> yeah so get in now get, get in get now i good. promise you the price will go up <laughs> get on that t-shirts you gotta make t-shirts man you're gonna sell so oh, many yeah. Yeah. Um, I would have bought a ton of them already. So, um, but we, we, we came here wanting to kind of know the, the man, the myth, the legend. We feel like we've, we've gotten to know a lot and hopefully others, you know, will, will, who are wanting to know, like, is this guy for real, uh, are going to see that you are. And, uh, you know, we, we greatly appreciate this. Actually, uh, I mean, right behind you in that black bag, there's a box. We grab that for a sec. We, we know you're a big cigar guy. Oh yeah. Uh, and so we we wanted to. I I don't really know anything about cigars. Jake doesn't really know anything about cigars, but uh, hopefully this is a decent cigar that we we got gotcha. you. Oh, the Quattro um, Aging Room. It is. Is it? And they're is from it? Nicaragua. Is, is that okay? Choice. That's perfect. Good. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good. So hopefully yeah. you know Thank you guys you. can can enjoy those and yeah um, appreciate that you know add it to the collection. So yeah, um, it's it's hardly. You and know, a heck of a collection. To, Sorry to interrupt, but you got a good collection in there, man. That refrigerator yeah. that you keep all your the humidor. Yeah. The humidor. Yeah. It's not okay. a refrigerator. Well, excuse yeah. me. Clearly, I know nothing. I have of, another one in the tax shed. So we steal that one when he's not looking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean it's it's yeah. it's uh, hardly you know enough for what you and your family have provided yeah. us here. But no, you know we greatly you. appreciate is, it. And, this is excellent. Um, yeah. 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 We, cool. We're just. Couldn't be more thankful to for the opportunity to come out and talk to you and, well, and to do I, this. And I appreciate I appreciate you guys coming out. I, I can't. I sat here and watched you set all this stuff up, and I'm like, <laughs> you're like these guys are. I'm like, I, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking my cell phone and and uh, no, you guys put a lot of work into this, and and I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, no worries. So obviously the YouTube channel, is there anybody, anywhere else people can, can find you on I mean, um, your website? We have, we have a website. If you want more information about the school itself, uh, drycreekwranglers.com. We have the, we have the, a podcast. Um, so it's, uh, I mean, what is our podcast? Dry Creek Wrangler. Okay. Dry we'll Creek put Wrangler. links in the description. Yeah. We'll put okay. links to all of it in the, yeah. in the description as well. Um, and we're going to have a ton of content that's going to come out of this trip. Um, to out here to Wyoming, um, 
some of it with Dry Creek Wrangler. Some of it we're going going to Yellowstone. We've got a lot going on, but um, we're we're just again so thankful. Appreciate it. This has been great. Um, I any, don't want to get any... bucked off a horse tomorrow, so if it does, just turn the camera the other way. <laughs> I've got just the horse for you. Oh, there my you God. Go. He's talking I... about matching the, the horse to the rider. Yeah. He's got the— I'm going right to get thrown. Yeah. So for people that have ridden a lot, mm -hmm. we have horses that have been ridden a lot. For people that have only ridden a little bit, we have horses that have only been ridden a little bit. I swear so, to God, if it's a plastic for, horse— <laughs> And for people— that have never ridden before. Okay. We have horses that have never been ridden before. Oh, no. So we'll match you to the horse. Oh, no. This sounds a little ominous. I'm going to die. <laughs> uh, maybe I want the plastic horse, you know? Yeah. I'm going to get one of those horses used to be out in front of Kmart. You know, yeah. you put the quarter in. I'm going to get one of them. Oh, my goodness. When I find one here. Lord knows I need it. Look, she's giving us the signal that we have two minutes left. So, All right. Um, well, guys, thanks so much. Guys and gals, appreciate it. Um, this has been fantastic. Um if you guys haven't yet, subscribe uh, to the channel. We, we love engaging with you guys. Leave a comment. Um, hopefully you like this video. Uh, we've got a lot more coming for you. So thanks so much. Take care. We'll talk to you next yes, time. Thank you, everybody, so much. Appreciate it. Dwayne, you're awesome. Thank you. This has uh, been great. Thank you. Yes, yes sir. No, thank you. Man, that was fun. This is cool. That was fun. I even enjoyed it. <laughs> he even enjoyed <laughs> he it. I even enjoyed it. Good. <laughs>